Hi, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for coming by. We're doing an Extreme Beginner series video. And this is like an ref a refresher course here, a refresher tutorial. We're just going to go over our palette. Of course, if you're an Extreme Beginner and you're going out and you're going to purchase your first palette with some paints, some brushes, um, you're just going to have a really fun time of it. It's really simple. You can get your art supplies online if you want. You don't even have to go out to the stores and get involved with all the traffic and cars and, you know, uh, dealing with all of the um, store hours and all this kind of a thing. You know, these days, if you're shopping online, you can get all your stuff online. But I, I like to shop myself out in the stores, the art stores near my house, near my home. Um, so um, basically, this is the Prang Oval 16 set that I always uh, rave about. It's a great starter uh, palette, painter's palette for watercolor. So basically, this is how it looks when you open it up for the first time. You see all your colors, you know, it's brand new. And then, you know, we're starting to think to ourselves, okay, now we have our new palette. What are we going to do next? And it also, by the way, does come with a brush. So you'll see a brush here in the center of the palette. So this is a great round brush that comes right with the kit. And this kit might be $10, $15, $20 at most for the brush and the paints. And basically you're started and you can actually start painting watercolor and literally paint, you know, three, six months with this one palette and your brush. And you don't need anything else except some watercolor paper, which you can also order online. Or you can, if you have a local hobby shop or hobby store or a big box art store or a small art supply store, you're, in, you're all set. But you can also order again online, no problem. So the first thing I wanted to kind of just mention is I always... Uh, impress upon everyone if you set up your colors in a warm and cool um, pattern in your palette and you keep that same setup in your palette all the time you're gonna progress and really have an easier time painting if you if you do it that way so here the colors just come random inside your palette like so and what I do is I organize it like this so what I'll do is I'll take this palette which is mine and I'll maybe just open this up here, maybe and open it up like that. Take the lid off it for right now. And what we'll do is we'll we'll take this palette and set it up like this one, which is basically warm colors on this side, and then sort of transitioning over to cooler colors like the blues and the greens. So the warms over here, and then the cooler colors, the greens and the blues, and then black and white up here. So you can see again, this is all sort of set up. It might be a logical way to set up the palette too, but I just always think of how is it easier to get your colors when you're painting warm, warm colors on one side and cooler colors on the other side. And you'll always be able to find your colors a little bit quicker. And especially you'll find your colors quicker when you're painting without having to think about it. You could think about your watercolors more and your painting and your paper and is the watercolor drying in this section and you got to get over here quickly and over there quickly. So watercolor is a fast medium. You don't want to be guessing or scratching your head at all when you're going to find your colors. So that's why most professional watercolor artists will always keep their colors the same setup in their palette all the time. Once they have their feel for what they like, they'll set it up and they won't change it at all for years and years and years because you'll always memorize those locations and you don't even have to think about it. You'll just automatically be painting and go, oh, I need a red right there. I need a, a blue right here. I need a green over here. You'll be able to paint really quickly and not think about it. It'll be like second nature, just like um, when you're uh, driving a car or riding a bicycle or um, eating and using your forks and your knives and your spoons when you're having a meal. You just know which you're going to pick up your fork, your spoon, your knife. You know how to do all that. You don't even think about it. You're just enjoying your food and your uh, dinner and your meals, your lunch, your breakfast, whatever you're having, and you're not thinking about, oh, do I pick up my fork now? Do I pick up my knife now? Do I pick up my spoon now? It, that's all on autopilot, so you're not even thinking about it. So that's what's cool about this. If you set up your palette one time and keep your colors the same, and you can just set it up all the time like that, you'll be you'll be perfectly um, set up for success with your with your painting when it comes to getting your colors from your palette. So let's do it. Let's take our palette and say, okay, we're going to set it up this way here versus this way. So these palettes are awesome. The Oval 16 palette, you can just peel out your colors just like this. 
You can take them out real easy like I'm doing here. You know, you can take them out here. Okay, just like that. So I'm just taking them all out first. Let's just take them all out and not be tr try to be too fancy or clever here. Let's take them all out, put them out here, and, and just set them up like that. Okay, that's good. Now, the next thing we would want to do is maybe take a piece of test paper. I don't want to use my good watercolor paper here. So, I'll have a piece of printer paper here from the printer, and I'll put that here on my paper just so we have a piece of paper we can use to test some of these colors because we might not be able to tell what the color is actually until we actually wet it a little bit and try it out. So let's do that. So first thing we want to do is, okay, let's start over here. This I can tell right away and you can even match this. Might be hard though if you don't, if you don't have a second palette like on this one. So you'll, look, you'll be at home, you'll be setting up your palette now. You'll be watching me and you'll be saying, okay, well, how's Chris going to do this? Take your darkest red, which is this one here, and you can see it's darker than any of these three orange and reddish colors. You can kind of see how these are our warmest colors. Reds and oranges, and there's yellow here too. That's pretty, that's very warm color. Sun, the sun of the color of the sun, yellow, light. So, but you can see this one here is the darkest out of all of them. Like this. This one here. And that matches this one. So that one goes in the first spot. Then we're going to look at the next one. What's the next darkest? This one. That's like an orangey red, but a really, really dark orangey red like that. Then what's the next one? Well, this one here, yeah. This one's a little lighter. So we're going from the dark reds to the orange and yellow. And you can kind of see that matches that one there. Perfect. And then this one here obviously matches this one. That's like a pumpkin orange, pump, color of a pumpkin, easy enough. This is yellow. This is just basic, your basic yellow, kind of a cool yellow. Right there. We're already halfway completed almost. Next one we're going to do is burnt umber. Burnt umber, and that's easy to match there. We only have that one brown, kind of like burnt umber, sepia kind of color. We'll put that right there. Then we have greens. Let's start looking at our greens. Okay. So basically we have we have three greens right here. So let's look at these and say which what do we think are the most logical? Well the lightest green out of all of them, the very very light green that has mostly a lot of yellow in it, a warmer green is this one here. And this one looks like that because it's the lightest one as far as dark and light. So when I say dark and light, I don't mean to be um trying to mix up my words or be not communicate correctly. Dark, I mean, is dark, like so. Light is like light, like this. So when I say dark, a dark green, this is the darkest green I see. This is the lightest green I see, like here. And then there's a medium green here, like that. And this is the darkest green. And that's the medium green, and that's the light green. So then I look at these three and say dark, Medium and light. Dark, medium, and light. Which one's the darkest one? Here. That one goes over here. This is really the darkest of the greens. It's got a lot of blue in it, too. Then we have the medium green. The medium is this one. And the light green is here. And the light green goes... You guessed it. Do you see how easy that is? So we're already halfway complete now. This is the medium green. And, yep. You guessed it again. There it is. So there you have it. Your first half of your palette complete. And you have it set up perfectly from warm to getting to the cooler green colors. Warm, hot, warm, red, orange, yellow, brown. Then you start getting into the greens. And the greens are warm here. Lots of yellow in that green. Then this green starts to get a little cooler with a little more blue. So now we're going to the cooler colors over here on this side. So you have cool colors over here. Warm colors on this side of the palette for the most part. Okay, so now we're over here and we have our darkest green, which has the most blue out of all these greens, and that's here. Now we're going to look at our blue colors and say, how are we going to look at our blue colors? Well, let's say 
colors with the most green are going to be closest to this green here. So what color out of these here has the most green in it? Well, now we can start. We might have, this is where we need to maybe use our water and our brush just to sort of see if we can match these up okay. So this one here, which one would this be? Like we said, this this blue is going to have mostly green in it, or a lot of green in it, because we're right next to the green here, because the greens are transitioning over to the blues over here now. So now we're going from green to the blues, and then into again like more of the red colors. Purple, actually. We, we wind up with the purple at the very, very top, like a lavender color. So let's start out here and say, which one is this going to be? Well, okay, that's our ver sort of like a viridian green if you're kind of used to colors and you see a lot of colors in watercolor. Let's, how about this one here? I'm thinking this one's going to be like a turquoise. Yeah. That's almost like a, a really light blue, bluish green. And then we just come over here and say, well, which one is that? And we'll just mix this one here. And we'll say, yes, that's the one that matches. So that one's over here. Okay, now what's the next one here? Well, the next one here is kind of like a French ultramarine blue, which is blue, but it has some red in it. Let's try this one out and see what we have here. There we go. Good. That's a good match right there. So that one goes there. Now we have another blue. I think this one's going to be here. Let's try it out. This is like a purple. Yep, looks good. Let's try this one here. Good. Purple. And then we have purple there. How about this one? Lavender. Yep, there we have lavender. Let's see if it matches this one. Uh, I'm not sure if that one matches that one. I think this one is going to match that one. Mm-hmm. So this one matches this one. That one there. And then that can only be one other two. Okay, that's a true, really, a beautiful purple. A um, nice violet color. That one goes there. Same color. And then now, simple enough, we have white and black left. White, black, and there we have it. We have our palette all set up. Now, if you can, we'll just make sure, you know, we have to make sure just black. Yep, there's black. Black, good, perfect. And then white, well, obviously, we don't have to really test that one out at all. But sometimes you can think, you can look at some of these colors, and they almost look very black or very, very dark. So, good to check it. But that's if you're matching your old palette to your new one. But if you're just starting out for the first time and you just bought your palette and you're getting started on Extreme Beginners here, this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to set up your palette for the most part pretty close to this. And what I'll do is one more time, I'll actually just take another sheet of printer paper here and let's make a little chart so you can kind of see how these colors are going to look. So I'll put a piece of tape down there, and we'll use our brush, and we'll just start out right here. And then rather than do this, we'll do this, we'll make a, let's spritz, we'll buy a little spritzer bottle, Holbein spritzer bottle and just spritz our colors, just really lightly, a little bit, not too much. You can kind of see I'm just giving them a little spritz, and this is what you're going to want to do each time you start a new painting and start working again with your watercolors. You just open up your palette, give your paints a little spritz, just to get them moist on the top, and that should be good to start out with. And then you might have to do that as you're working for like a maybe half an hour to an hour later, you might have to spritz a little bit more, but not too much and not too little. Just get them a little bit moist, and that's all you have to do. So we'll start out here, and we'll get our first red. And you can kind of see that that red is a beautiful, like a rose red, beautiful, deep, 
exciting red. Kind of has, you can tell it's a little bit cool. It's not really super warm like towards the yellows. So that is that first red. And then your se our second red is basically like a cadmium orange. So this is even really like a cadmium orange. It could also pass for a red, like an orangey red. But you can kind of see how that's pretty much like a orange red. And then this one here is pretty much a uh, orange. Okay, and then the fourth one is a light orange or a pump I call it like a pumpkin orange. You kind of see how it like, looks like a pumpkin like a pumpkin color. And that's an orange. And then of course, simple enough, we only have one yellow here. It's a cool yellow, a lemony yellow. That looks like a lemon, doesn't it? That's like a lemon yellow. So that's easy to kind of so right away we can kind of see here this is the color of a lemon. This is like a color of a pumpkin, orange, pumpkin, orange. And then your first three uh, reds here, red oranges, is basically this one is a really beautiful cool red with a little bit of blue in it, like a rose color. That's the first color. Then you have a, an orange, a dark orange, or a kind of like a, um, they call it like a blood orange. Like sometimes you'll get a blood orange, blood oranges in the supermarket, at the markets. Beautiful tasting, delicious oranges that are kind of more of a reddish like um, color. They're very sweet and kind of have tartness to them too. They're really delicious. And then you have, again, your orange, your just straight orange. Then you have your pumpkin orange over here. Like that. And then your lemon color, your lemon yellow, which is basically the color of a lemon. So those are pretty easy to figure out. So when you're setting up your palette at home and you have your palette for the first time, start to set up your colors right in here in the same order I have them. So this is the left side of the palette over here. We'll continue on. We have brown and we'll put our brown here. Beautiful brown. This is like the color of uh, the, the earth, leather, all kinds of cool beautiful brown earth tones we can create from our browns. And then we have a green. We have a light green. This is like a very very light warm green colors of fresh, fresh plants, fresh leaves and plants and fresh grass. That's that kind of a very fresh and warm green, lively green. Then we have here a green that starts to get a little bit cooler. Let's get a, it has a little more blue in it. And that looks like This is starting to look like it's starting to get um, some of those bitter plants, you know, you might have. Things like that. And then we're going to start down at the bottom again. We're going to go down here and we're going to look at this. And this is going to be like a turquoise color. Okay. And that's a green that's really cool with a lot of blue in it. So it's basically like a bluish green or a turquoise color. Then here we're going to get to the next blue. And this is really beautiful. That's a light blue. I'd call that a light blue. Then we're going to have a warmer blue, like a ocean color blue or sky color blue. That's kind of a na like started getting navy blue almost there. Not quite maybe as dark as navy blue, but definitely it's getting toward the warmer blue with a little more red in it. There's a little bit of red in that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's sort of going towards purple right here. But that's just your beautiful all around blue. This is your light blue. Then we have, we're going to start to look at our purple. And we do, that's purple right there. So that's a bluish purple. Definitely, you know, it's per, it's got that purple starting to get a little warmer with the red in there. So I'd call that a really beautiful purple right there. Then this one here, we're going to start to say, wow, yeah, that's another beautiful purple there too as well. And 
and this is like a darker purple, a richer purple. And then here we're going to have a lavender color. Another gorgeous color. Lavender. And then we have it. White, which you can add any color to, to make it like a... Uh, a pastel colors, pastel colors, you can mix any little bit of white in there. You could take some blue, put some white in that blue, and you have a beautiful pastel color. You make a beautiful blue like that. The color of blue jeans maybe or something, right? You can kind of have fun with that white. That white is really fun to work with. It's an opaque white, so kind of like a Chinese white or a titanium white. You can mix that with any of your colors and kind of give yourself a, a freedom to make other different washes. I may not work with white a lot, but you may decide, wow, I'm going to really start experimenting with white in my paintings. I want to have more of a softer look, maybe like pastel look. It's up to you. You can kind of experiment. And I always say on my channel here, always do experimental, uh, you know, things with your paintings, with your watercolors and artwork in general and artwork. It's about creative creativity too create some new things, try venture out and do some little spin-offs of what we're doing here on my channel most of the time, and you'll learn some new things. You'll have some fun. You might pick up a few things you like to incorporate into your artwork that maybe I don't do, or maybe another artist you might follow may not do something. But if you find something that you like that works for you and you really are interested in it and get you excited about your artwork even more, go for it. Totally do it. And then uh, our last color, of course, People argue it's not a color, but that's black, and that's um, just basically like an ivory black or an ink black. And you can always change your blacks and make them different. You can take black and mix it with different colors. So let's say you take black here and black here. You can make a warm or cool black. So you can take a little bit of burnt umber and make a warm black like that. Or you could take a little bit of blue and put that into your black and make it a cool black, like that. So watercolor offers you incredible, limitless water mixes of colors. That's one thing about watercolor that you really don't have with any other medium, is you can really just have a so much fun blending and mixing colors to your heart's content when you're painting. So you can just blend and mix and have all kinds of fun doing your watercolors. And it's all up to you how much fun you want to have. And, you know, maybe I know sometimes people email me and say, Chris, I don't know how to draw. That's fine. You don't have to draw with watercolors. You can just start working with fun and all kinds of different colors with your brush and coming up with all different kinds of colors and creations with colors. And you might find that you don't even really need to do any drawing. You might just want to fill up your paintings with colors and do all kinds of mixes of colors and find out what you like and come up with all kinds of different ideas. Again, going back to the create uh, creativity idea, be creative with your watercolors and if something doesn't work, don't get worried about it. Just take another approach to it. Um, you know, hey, I, you know, I'll always admit that it took me quite a long time to learn how to draw well. Um, I decided I really wanted to do it, so I just constantly practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced on my drawing skills. And I even had practice from when I was very young in school. We learned about drawing when we were in school, and we had art classes, and I always liked that. And my mom taught me how to draw when I was very, very young. Not that I drew all the time, but I did have a little bit of a head start with it, but not a whole lot. But in any case, some of you may say, you know what, I don't want to go through the efforts of drawing. Well, then you don't have to draw with watercolors. You do it the way you want to do it. Have fun with it. Most of you I know know how to draw and are practicing at it, and that's great. I want you to do that. But again, don't don't ever feel like you're locked into any one specific technique with watercolor. Just go for it. Have fun. And again, if you don't want to draw, you can just paint to your heart's content. Mix colors. You can paint shapes. You, you don't you know you can paint a circle. You can paint a circle. You don't have to draw it, right? You could draw that. You could do a square. See, I'm going to draw. I'm going to paint a square. Something close to what a square looks like, like that. Uh, triangle. We can do a triangle like that. And then you can paint a cylinder. You 
you can paint a cylinder, you can paint a square, you can paint a cube. Maybe that's the shadow side of a cube. Yeah, you can have fun with just the brush without any pencils or pens or anything. But it's totally up to you. Then you could turn it into a truck or something really cool like that. Again, have fun and enjoy your watercolors. And uh, we're going to be right back. We're going to do a couple more exercises on our watercolor paper. We were just doing some fun stuff here on our printer paper. But we will be right back and we'll uh, just do a few compositions here. A little small watercolor, uh, you know, um, exercises, let's call them, or swatches on this watercolor paper we have here. And this was just our beginning of trying to set up your colors in your palette the correct way. And I know it's been a long time already and we haven't taken a, we didn't take a break yet. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Let's relax. Let's get a cup of coffee, cup of tea, um, you know, soda or glass of water. Relax. We'll sit down or we'll stand up and stretch if we're sitting down, whatever it is. But again, the main thing was to set up your colors so that you have them just like this. And then you put them back the same way all the time. So if you buy a new palette, just like this, the Oval 16, you buy another one, a second one. If you run out of one of your colors, you just take a color you might have run out of from your old palette and put it into your new palette. So that's all. You keep taking your palette and plugging in new colors as you need them. And you'll always have colors to put back in here if you run out of anything with your new palette you get. Or if you have your old palette like this, you take your new colors out and put them in. And that's all you have to worry about so that you'll always be using your colors, you know, efficiently and uh, economically. You won't be wasting your palette and you know, like if you run out of one color, you're not going to take the whole palette and throw it away. You would keep your palette. And then if you just need a new yellow in your palette, you take the yellow out of here, out of this new palette. Take the old one out like that. And you plug in your new palette, your new yellow into your, your, new, uh, your palette here. Your palette that you're using every day. So now you have your new yellow that you needed in your palette you're using every day. And then you just, you're missing one here. Then you might buy a third palette and plug in a new yellow in here and you just always keep using your uh, paints efficiently so you're not wasting anything throwing anything away and then you can do that and you can even buy some tube paints if you want and squeeze some tube paints in here so if you run out of one color let's say if you run out of a color here you can take some you can buy some tube paints and squeeze in an orange here where your orange paint is if you want that's another you know avenue you have to explore if you want to instead of maybe buying the oval 16 again you can also buy some tube paint and then just start filling in your you match your colors accordingly and you put in your tube paint to fill up your palette instead of pulling these out and sticking these in you can just get some tube paint and put them in there and you got it all right let's come right back let's take a break and then we'll get started Okay, we're back from our break, everybody. Welcome again here. And hey, if it's your first time here and you've never been on my YouTube channel before, I want to welcome you and say thank you for coming by. I really appreciate it. I know you're going to have a great time learning on my uh, YouTube channel here. Uh, there's a subscribe button on the right-hand side below. You just hit subscribe. And all that really does is it just lets you know each week that I've made a new video. YouTube will just send you a... Um, notification on your YouTube channel. When you open up YouTube the next time, it'll just show you that I've made another video. That's all it does. There's nothing else, no catches to it, and you won't get any emails or, um, you know, text messages or anything like that or phone calls. Uh, when you subscribe on YouTube, all that really does is it just really, YouTube will just send you my videos because you were basically saying when you subscribe to my channel, you really like the information here. You like the paintings and the fun and all this practice that we do here and all of the um, interesting things we do, painting and watercolor. And then they'll just send you my videos every week uh, that I make a new, whenever I make a new video, you'll see that in your YouTube channel the next time you come on YouTube, when you open up your YouTube uh, icon on your phone or your laptop or your electronic device. So let's keep going here. And uh, again, we set up our colors now. So we have our colors all perfectly set up in our palette. And now we're just gonna do some, you know, real simple uh, painting to, um, swatches. So we're going to just take a quick pencil 
and um, we'll make a couple squares. So if you're not used to drawing, now's the perfect time you'll get used to drawing by just doing some simple swatches that we do all the time here on my channel. You just draw a square, any old type of square, it doesn't have to be perfect, like that, <clears throat> that's all. And you set your pencil down and you pick up a brush and you just say to yourself, what color would I like to use to uh, paint this square? Um, uh, let's say, let's mix up a couple different colors. Let's make it a um, combination of colors. Let's go with some turquoise green, like that. And then maybe some blue right above that. And I'm just using my standard brush that comes with this set. Turquoise green and a little bit of uh, blue. And then let's just make a swatch, simple. Just take our colors, you know, you have a little bit of water in there, you spritz your paint with a little bit of spritzer bottle. Just a little bit though, not too much. Don't flood it out and make it a mess, just a little spritz. And you get the paint and then you just maybe start at the top and just Try to keep your brush inside the square. You just move it around. You pick up a little more paint. And maybe down here a little more green. The turquoise color. You can even go straight into your... That's a fun thing to practice. You, you know, you have a little bit of paint mixed out here, like so, with a little bit of water. Then you go back in and get straight, straight paint and put a little bit of straight paint right in there while it's still damp and wet. And you'll find that that's one of the keys to creating beautiful watercolors is being able to uh, adjust your water and your mixes when you're painting. So if you added way too much water to your paints here and added way too much water over here, so let's say you did this, I'll just take a larger brush just to get some extra water in here. Not that I'm going to use it, but I'm just trying to demonstrate it here. So let's say you added too much water and you did this and you put and you went in here and got some green and said okay green a little bit of blue a little bit of green and then here you did some blue and some green you can kind of see how that's kind of it doesn't look terrible but you want to be able to control so this is fine this is a light wash you would consider that a light wash with lots of water and just a little bit of paint so all your washes are good washes, but you have to be able to control them. That's the key with watercolor, just controlling your washes. And that's why we would practice with these swatches so that you actually get the feel for like what is a, what is a darker wash and what is a lighter wash. Well, this is a lighter wash, more water. Maybe this is a sky color, a beautiful light sky, like in the summertime, a beautiful sky wash light sky wash. Maybe it's a little darker up top there. Maybe it's a little more blue up top. So the sky is like darker blue up top and then it gets lighter. And maybe this is some water over here. Maybe this is water like some ocean or a river or a pond or a lake. You got your darker blues and greens and here's your lighter maybe a light sky wash. So that's what the fun of watercolor is, just learning how to have your darks and lights uh, at your control. So now we have, this is like, let's call this a medium, a medium wash. A medium wash. And let's call this a light wash. Now let's go with a dark wash, see how we can do that. Well, a dark wash is... We're not going to bother even going anywhere on the palette over here. We're just going to go straight into the paint. Let's make it a different color though. Let's go, uh, well, let's keep it these kind of colors so we can kind of see. Let's go with the purple though. We'll change up the color a little bit, but we're just going to go with straight. And let's maybe just do a, a let's do a, a swatch. We'll do a square like that. There we go. So we do a little square and then we paint within the, the square just so we get the feel of being able to paint and be accurate with our painting and our brushwork. So you just kind of mix it around and you go a little slower when you get next to the lines. And then when you're in the middle here you can swing your brush around. You don't have to worry too much. It's when you're getting close to the lines when you're painting. You'd be a little you're a little more careful along the lines there like that. And then let's do a little more over here. Maybe some that purple there. But you can notice I didn't go. I didn't do any 
touch any water, straight paint right out of the palette, and that we'll call a dark wash. So dark wash is like so. And we'll call that a dark wash. So you can kind of see The light wash has we'll put this in parentheses a lot of water. Medium wash has a little water. And our dark wash has almost no water. And these are your three key ways you'll use your watercolor paints to create your paintings. And you, if you practice this like so, if you have, let's say you're just starting out in watercolor, you're an extreme beginners. And I know I'm an extreme beginner in a lot of different things. I can think of a few right now. I'm an extreme, you know, I'm an extreme beginner with sometimes some things I do at work. Sometimes at work I have to, I get a new project and I haven't done anything with it before. I haven't really, I'm not too used to it or something. And I have to like learn on the fly and figure out some things. Well, then I'm an extreme beginner at something that I do at work. Well, if I'm an artist, well, this is something new. I'm, if I'm an artist and someone says, I want a painting, I want you to make me a painting. I want it to have a lot of light colors and dark colors. Well, then you'll have to figure it out and say, okay, well, I need to figure out how to create light medium and dark washes in my painting. That's what the person's asking me for, that I have to paint for them. They've asked me to do a painting for them. So therefore, if you're an artist and you have to create a painting and you need to use all of these three um, washes, you'll know how to do it. You'll say, perfect. Dark wash is I rinse off my brush. You might have a tissue handy and you say, okay, I rinse off my brush. I dry off the water off my brush so I don't have too much water. And then I go right in and I get some blue. Straight paint, no water. And I have no water. Uh, you know, very, very little water. Almost no water. Straight paint. And there you have it. That's your dark wash. Then we need to figure out how do we get a light wash. Well, simple. Let's try a different. Let's try some red here. Okay, red, and it's a light wash, so let's add some water to it. Okay, that's a light wash. Let's try that. There we go. So we have a nice red wash, light wash, a lot of water. Okay. And then a medium wash. Let's go with a medium wash. Let's go with green. Medium wash is, I'll add a little bit of water to my brush to get a little bit of water in my palette, like so. And then we'll do a green wash, a medium wash. And there we have it. Okay, and, th and there we have our three light, medium, and dark washes. You have it right there. That's the key to watercolor. Then when you go into any watercolor painting that you might see, you might look at a photograph, you might look at a magazine, a watercolor book, um, you might find something you're just seeing in your house and you want to paint that, you'll go, where are the darks in that subject matter I'm looking at? Where are the medium colors in that uh, subject matter I'm looking at, whether it's a bouquet of flowers or a couch or uh, some fruit on a table, anything like that, you're looking at it and you're just going, Dark, light, or medium? What are what am I seeing? And then how am I going to get to that? Your dark wash, you know. You're going to go straight into the paints. You're not going to add any water to it, basically. And your medium washes, you might add a little bit of water to your mix when you're mixing your color, just to get a little bit of water in there to keep it a medium-looking wash. And then your light wash, you're going to keep it super light. Tons of water and just a little bit of paint. So here for our light red, we went with lots of water and a little bit of paint. Our medium color, a little bit of water, not too much, a little water. 
and we get our medium. Wash, and then our dark wash, rinse off the brush, dry off the paint, and go straight in to your paint with, you know, spritz the paint a little bit first with your spritzer bottle, and then you, you get straight paint. And you get dark color, dark wash, just like that. And that really looks fantastic in your paintings. Now, what we'll do is we'll take another quick break, and what we'll do is we'll do a small painting, and we'll use all three washes, dark, light, and medium washes, to come up with a simple painting, so you can see how you're going to utilize those three different washes uh, in a painting. Okay, so we'll be right back. Glad you're joining along. Have fun. Thumbs up if you like it so far. We've had a lot of great information right here in this video, packed into one video, the whole enchilada here we're going for. The palette, how you're going to set up your palette if you're buying it for the first time. A lot of you, you're, uh, lots of you are emailing me and saying, hey, Chris, I'm an extreme beginner. I'm a number one. You're hitting that. You're sending me those messages, number one, number one, number one, and the comments keep sending me your comments telling me you're a number one. That means you're an extreme beginner, and I'll create more videos like this where I can just keep kind of refreshing things as we go, as you're working. And then, uh, you know, other of you, you're not going to maybe dwell on this too much because maybe you're already six months into painting here on my channel and you're already fine, you're up and going and you're uh, onto a few other different things with the watercolor uh, painting. But for right now, those of you that are just kind of starting out, a little bit here, a little bit there, maybe you're very busy, you have a lot of work to do, you're a busy job, family, all these different types of things, you're busy, you still might need a refresher once in a while, it's for you. Or if you're just starting out and maybe you're here for the first time or even if you've been here a couple months, and you're just starting out, you know, still and getting your, um, you know, your artwork going and started, this is the perfect thing to do. This will kind of give you the basics of it, of watercolor in a really quick format in this one video. Okay, so we'll do a painting next really quickly. Nothing too much, just, you know, maybe in the next 20 minutes, we'll cover a quick painting and then that'll be it. And you'll just have the whole summary of starting out in watercolor. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, we're back and we're going to get started again. And let's peel up this uh, first uh, ex two exercise we did here, just with some swatches, some colors. Again, the medium, light, and dark wash. And now we're going to create something similar in a painting so you can kind of see the, the way we'll use light, dark, and medium washes in a painting so that uh, it really just locks it in to your mind how we're going to approach our paintings when we start working in watercolors. Okay, so I'll put down a uh, new sheet of paper and um, I'm going to use some artist tape here. So what I'll do is I'll tape down this first up here. Okay. And it's probably good if you if you can. Not you don't have to, but I like to put down some tape and make us a, a frame around the painting we're going to do, so that when you're done, you can lift up the tape and it it looks like a finished painting and it looks like you have it kind of framed out, which always looks good. So that when you you're doing your practice exercises in these tutorials, when you're done and you lift up the tape, you're going to see a, more of a finished looking style. Um, painting itself. So I'm going to double up on this. I'm going to make it a little, I'm going to trim down the size of the frame a little bit. Okay. okay there we go. And I'll use a uh, quick pencil line just to kind of show our So that's the border of our tape, like that. Okay, now what I did was, since we're going to do a little bit of a larger painting, I always mention here on my channel, you probably have heard it before, and if you're just brand new here on my channel for the first time even, watching an Extreme Beginners video that we have here, I usually um, say that when you're just starting your first maybe couple weeks or month or two, 
you can use your brush that you have with your set that comes with the set, your round brush. That's fine because you're going to do some smaller paintings and tinker around with the paints and whatever. But then eventually after a little while you're going to need to get some bigger brushes and maybe these come in great sets. These are, uh, they're called Princeton Art and Brush Company brushes. And they come, you maybe have like five in a set. You buy a little plastic, uh, uh, it comes in a plastic package and it maybe has five or six brushes like this and you'll have like two of these, maybe two or, two or three flat brushes like this. And then maybe there might be another, um, another round brush in there too, like this. So you'll have like three or four or five different brushes and they're very inexpensive. They're synthetic brushes, synthetic watercolor brushes and they're made by Princeton Art and Brush Company. And they're great and you can kind of see they have the wood handles, the, the faux wood handles. They have that beautiful wood look to them. So they really look nice. They handle beautifully when you're just starting out water. If you're just starting out watercolor, no need to buy really expensive brushes. Try to buy the um, synthetic brushes because they it's a little easier to work with watercolor with synthetic brushes to start with. But once you get rolling with watercolor, you're going to want to use sable brushes, which are natural hair brushes. And those are better. They hold more water. And you'll notice that it's fun to practice with both, but when you start, synthetic brushes are really, really good. So this is a little bit of a larger painting, so I'm going to go with a little bit of a larger brush. And this is... Um, the 5 8 inch wash brush by Princeton Art and Brush Company. And we'll, we'll use this. So now, again, like we said before, we're going to keep very close um, watch on the three different washes we're going to use. Medium wash, light wash, and dark wash in this painting. Okay, so what I will do is I will mix up some paint in this first here, some light wash with some blue. So I'm going to use some blue here, three different blues, this blue here, this blue, and this blue. Okay, so that's going to be the first color I'm going to use for the sky. We're going to do uh, an ocean and sky. So what I'll do even to make it a little more um, straightforward, I would, I will, I'll like to use three quarter sky. So, or two thirds sky, one third sand and beach and ocean. So I'm just going to make a line across here and up here. And we're going to say this is sky up here, and then ocean over here. So two-thirds sky, one-third ocean. Very simple. And then I'll take our blue, and we're just going to put a little bit of blue up in the sky here, top. This is our medium wash. It's not extremely light not extremely dark. It's a medium blue. And then we get that and then we just take it and we work it down. Add a little bit of water to our brush and then we just kind of work it down like so. That's all you have to do. Like that. You could go back in and get a little darker blue. Add a little darker blue up here if you want just to Keep the sky a little darker up top, but that's pretty much a medium wash right there. Now we're starting to get into some lighter wash here. What I do now is I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water off the brush here, and then just use a damp brush and just kind of dampen the paper down here. We don't want too much water there. And that's our light wash there. So you can kind of see how that works. Medium wash up here. We start to work it down with a little more damp brush and less water, but less paint too, so that it's lighter. You can always blot up a little bit of paint too with a tissue. So I get a tissue here out of the tissue box, and I just tap on the paper just a little bit like so. See how I lighten that up like that? 
There we go. Now we have a sky, medium, light wash here. Now we're going to go back into a dark wash. So now to do our dark ocean, we're going to, we're going to want to use our green. And our green is giving us a little bit of a issue here, but we're just going to be mindful that we have to be patient with watercolors. Patience is your best virtue with watercolors. Don't let it don't let it frustrate you. Just keep trying. If you have a bad painting, just start another one. Don't worry about it. So I'm making some dark blue now. So green and blue, these two here. Get some good, rich, beautiful blue and green there. Then add a touch of burnt umber to that to get it a little bit darker. Like that. And even some blue and purple. Make that a good dark. And then now you're going to make your distant ocean like that. And you just take your brush and go across like that. No big deal. See that? And you just go back side to side. And now you have your darks. Your dark wash is right there. And then you take a brush, put it into there, a little bit of blue, and then you splash a little bit. Tap a little bit of paint on your paper just to give it that feel of splashing water. For your ocean. Can you see how that works? There you go. Then a little bit of that turquoise color again down here. And make it even lighter over here, like so. And then if you want, you can get a little more darks and just to get a little better line here across here. Like that, just to straighten it out a little bit, the line here. You want to have that ocean straight. You can always put a piece of tape across it, a piece of um, artist tape across it. But you can get it straight enough if you're careful. You just take your brush, hold your brush straight like so, and just carefully rest your hand on the paper or on the board if you're working on a table. Keep your hand still on the board and the table and just kind of make sure you have it straight across there. For the most part, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you want to get it pretty level like that. Doesn't that look fantastic? And then now we're going to do some more light washes, some sand colors, orange, red, orange and red, a little bit of brown. And let's take our brush and drag it across like this. Can you see how I have my brush? Not like this, but like this. A little bit of brown, orange and yellow for a sand type of color. And you just drag it across the paper like this. And then maybe you could dry off your brush a little bit on a tissue and you can sweep across the, like that. Like that. Okay. And voila, look at how good that looks. You can kind of have fun with that. A couple more splashes. And there you have it, a beautiful sky, ocean, and beach scene. And the most fun about this is, again, if you put your tape down first, you lift up your tape and you're going to see how great it looks. Does that not look fantastic? And then what we've done is we've basically covered how we can create an awesome, beautiful ocean, sky, and beach scene. Keeping in mind that we were all along using the techniques that we said in the beginning of this video, which were once you get your palette set up with your colors in the proper location, you're going to leave them that way all the time, every day, every week, every month, and year after year. You're keeping your palette the same way until you change your palette. If you change your palette, then you have to basically set it up in this similar fashion. Then the second thing we said is when you're doing watercolor, you're an extreme beginner. You have to know that you have to have awareness that you always want to try to get your three basic 
light washes, medium washes, and dark washes in your paintings as you see them. Not always will you have all three of those, but be mindful and look at that. Look at your subject matter, whatever you're painting, and ask yourself, do I see darks, lights, and mediums washes in my, in my painting that I'm looking at or my subject matter? In, in this painting, we do have lights, mediums, darks, lights, and lights. So a lot of lights, a little bit of darks, and a lot of mediums. And that's what we wanted to capture in this painting. So I'm hoping you're having a great time of this, having fun at home, in your place, in your studio, your kitchen, your bedroom, your den, you know, wherever you like to paint. I'm hoping you're having a great time of it, having fun doing this type of a painting here. It's very simple and it gives you the basic concept of watercolor in a real simple, straightforward fashion. Trying to get those darks, mediums, and lights. We wouldn't want to try to paint this painting without capturing these beautiful darks of the deep, dark ocean. Or, or we wouldn't want to paint this painting if we couldn't capture the really beautiful, light, fluffy clouds over here in the distance over the ocean. And we wouldn't want to paint this painting if we didn't paint in the beautiful medium, deep blue, beautiful sky above here on the top of the sky and then leading down into the clouds. And then of course the dark, beautiful ocean and then the waves here crashing into the shore and the little bits of speckles of water splashing and sand. And then we also have our sand, which is our light color too as well, a nice, nice light wash. So let's get all these in there. And then when you're done with your painting, please sign it. Sign your painting, put it in a frame if it comes out really good, and then you put it up on the wall and you're excited. You have a painting, you have it framed, and you're off to your next one. Okay, let's keep practicing, having fun. And again, if you haven't subscribed, it's right on the right-hand side down here below. You just hit subscribe, this way you don't lose me. You'll keep finding me every week because YouTube will just send you a little quick notice every uh, time you open up YouTube. You'll see my videos in your um, YouTube channel. And that's it. Okay. Thumbs up if you like this video again. And leave me comments too. Ask me questions. I'm always here to answer your questions on YouTube. And um, also too, if you just want to say thank you and uh, those things are always, I'm always, uh, you know, happy to hear everyone being thankful and just, you know, and I'm really grateful that all of you are uh, following my channel and we're working together. So we'll see you on the next video. Okay. Bye-bye for now.